Hi guys, it's Silverette again and I got a request to do a tutorial on the flying camera route editor and I figured that I would just do it since I found some tutorials on it but they didn't quite cover everything so I just figured I'm gonna cover all of the random stuff that you won't even use probably but just try and cover everything about it but first I'm just gonna um, yeah, d explain the basics of this and basically what you need to make some nice little clips with this so let's get started first of all I always like to change my camera mode to either advanced or free look uh, just depends on what you want um, advanced is really handy if you want to focus on an inversion for example you can kind of zoom in on it and then um, kind of move around it like this but then again some people really like to use the free look camera as it does offer a bit more freedom as you can just um, basically rotate around and zoom in on things to basically get a very nice view of things um, now I am very much used to the advanced camera so I'm just gonna use that right now so um, there are two ways of actually getting the flying camera route editor and one way is to press ctrl shift and F11 at the same time but since my keyboard is totally fucked up I can't do that so I'm gonna use a cheat uh, rename a guest D lean like this and press enter to get this and now this is the flying camera route editor and to get um, all of the many interesting possibilities up all you need to do is click new row which is supposed to say new route but it doesn't and then you get all this and now this might be very confusing but I'll just give you the basics um, well first of all you can see that uh, it's right now pointing over there and that makes no sense but um, there are two ways of adding um, points uh, for the camera to go so because the way this works is you basically add points for the camera to go and where it should look and if you add another point it's going to connect the two points with a line where the cam where the camera is going to fly over and there are two ways to add these one of them is just press insert and you'll see that uh, the camera over here in the preview screen by the way if this is not working that's because of this little option if you turn this off like this you won't see it but if you turn it on you'll see the preview and I definitely recommend turning that on because it's very helpful and you can see that I now see this and if I press insert one more time you can see two squares over here and now each both the well both of these squares represent one piece on the timeline of the camera root thing and if I press insert one more time you're gonna see another um, little block and this by the way this big gray thing is the preview um, well I don't know what to call it but you can move around this by uh, with well with your mouse basically and you can see what kind of path the camera takes so as you can see the first ones are um, pretty much the same but um, actually you know the second ones are pretty much the same and this is because if you um, click insert it's gonna insert another block um, at the beginning so for example if I go over here and insert another one it's gonna go over here so as you can see this is now the camera route and that's not very great so I usually recommend using these the S and the F okay I'm, g I'm just gonna click on new route because this route is trash if you want to start all over again because your route is just terrible and it's bad basically you can just click new route and it's empty again so what I usually do is I start with uh, one point for example over here this is where I want to start my route and I press S this is um, this is gonna add a block at the start now if I want to add a block at the end so if I want to move, move the camera from over there to here then I want to press F that means it adds another block at the end and not at the beginning like the insert button usually uh, like the insert button does so I usually use S and F for this and now as you can see on this little preview thing it's now moving from my first point to my second point and this is exactly what we want also you can press this play button just to see um, yeah just to see whether you like it or not now as you can see it does move quite slowly now this is the last thing to the basics of it that I want to address and that is this little red bar now this is going to be very important uh, this blue bar does I know, I'm not even exactly sure what this blue bar does really but you don't I don't think you really need it um, does it oh wait uh, what does that do now let's see it doesn't appear to do anything it doesn't really move anything anyway 
the red bar is the speed of the um, clip. So if, if, for example, I turn this up, um, well, pretty much all the way up, then it moves very fast. And if I turn it all the way down, it's going to be extremely slow. Now, this is just going to... Um, the best thing you can do with this, honestly, is just slide it around and see what kind of speed you like best. I usually put it somewhere over here and get a nice little gentle speed, but not too slow. Now, if you think, okay, I like this, I'm fine with this little uh, flying camera thing, then all you need to do is press record, and it's going to record a clip for you. And um have to wait a little while, and as you can see, it's really laggy right now. And this is not a problem, this is just the in-game recording, doing its work, um, recording and shooting frame for frame, so that takes a very long time, but it will result in a very smooth video file in the end. And um, I'm just going to wait for this to play. As you can see, it's it's pretty much real time. The ducks aren't going fast or anything, and I think it's almost over right now. And this is a tricky part um, because it doesn't automatically stop recording. So if, for example, right now it is still actually recording, you can tell by the fact that that duck is moving very slowly and is still laggy. So if you want to stop the recording, you need to press S. Um, well, whatever shortcut you have um, for uh, recording. For me, that's F11. Okay, so if you like this, and you can see that right now, you're actually stuck in this frame. So if you want to move again, um, what I usually do is I just click on a new route, and then you're all fine again. So that's the way that works. And that's ba pretty much the basics of it. That's all you need to create some decent flying camera route things. But there are loads of buttons on here that still serve some functions. And I'm just going to um, slowly go over some of the things of this. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to create a new little route. I'm just going to zoom in on the lift hill over there and um, see what I can do with that. Okay, now first of all, there's this very handy thing, which is um, called new target smoothing. Now, for example, if I play uh, this thing on the preview right here, that's all, by the way, first of all, I want to show this. You can do this, and then if you play it, it's going to play the clip on the full screen. So that's very handy if you want to see what it looks like. You can also use the um, solo play mode, but that's, that gets rid of the um, interface thing of the flying camera. So I don't usually do that. But anyway, if you want, if you want to, it to be a little bit more smooth, for example, it's kind of um, doing some weird stuff, then you can, um, well, basically turn this on and... As you can see, it's somewhat more smooth at the beginning. As you can see, um, if I turn it off, uh, it's going to go straight for a little, like uh, one second, and then it's going to do the turn. But if you turn it on, it's going to be one big turn. So you can see that the camera movement is more smooth and linear and doesn't do weird jiggle things. Anyway, that's pretty handy in some cases. Now I'm just going to turn both of those things off right now. And there are also some other things like recalculate. Um, this is going to just um, recalculate the movement of the camera, sometimes make it a bit better and smoother. Then there is the control thing, which you can use actually to, uh, for example, you can see here the line of my flying camera, where you can see the dots as well, actually they're, they're represented by little camera things, of where the camera is going and um, the direction it's pointing towards. As you can see, this big camera on the line is actually something that you can grab and just move the line around and um, use different things with that depending on uh, whether you clicked on control or not as you can see I'm now doing other movements than I just did and the same works for this this is um, the direction that it's gonna head towards as you can see if I move it you can see in the preview that the camera is gonna do some weird stuff and basically you can use this to point the camera towards a specific place but I usually don't use this since it's not all that user friendly and usually just clicking S and F will do in most cases. Now um, let's say for example that I think this last thing is actually not on the location that I want it to be and I want to replace it with something else. You need to click on it, uh, go wherever you want to go next and say set position. Now it's going to set the position of that dot to where I'm standing right now. So as you can see it changed the entire flying camera route thing to make a route that actually goes over here and if I for example go over here and set position again it's gonna change the route again so this is very handy if you mess up on your route and just think that you want to slightly change it and slightly change the location of one of the dots and you can just use that and um, same works for time if you just think that 
Um, let me add another dot in here. Uh, if you think that you want to add this one over here, you can set time and it'll move over there. And as you can see, this also means that the first part will be slightly faster than the second part as there is kind of the same distance covered in but in a shorter amount of time. As you can see, the time um, is represented by the space between the dots. And that's pretty much it. And if you then think, no, I want to delete this, all you need to do is just delete. This delete button deletes the dots, and this delete button, you should watch out for that one, is just going to delete the entire flying camera thing. And that's pretty much it. There is one last thing that um, you might be confused about, but that's not really anything too special. This is um, the way that the camera um, well moving, movement thing works. If you can see camera, world, and local, and this all... Um, is something just for this little thing. If you change it to world, it's gonna um, actually snap on the grid of Roller Coaster Icon 3. And if you change it to local, it's gonna um, snap to the location of the line. So as you can see, it's gonna be parallel to that line. So that's pretty much that. And then I think I've pretty much covered everything. Yeah, that's it. The last thing is if you're if you're done with your route, you can just um, save it. Give it a name over here, and let's just call this one um, Cool Roots, and you can save it and, and just um, add another name over here. You can see that I've saved another one already. And if you want to load a route, for example, um, this, this works in cases where you need to record a park, but while recording, you need to go, like something happens, like mom calls you for dinner. Now you can just save it and open it another time and load it by using the load uh, thing. And as you can see, there's narwhals. I can just open that thing. This is a camera route thing that I made earlier. And as you can see, you can just take that and get the same route and just try it. So that's really handy in some cases. Now that's everything about the flying camera route editor. Um, I hope you learned something or, or enjoyed the video. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.